As an artist who paints primarily with acrylics, for years, watercolor has been my arch nemesis. I have been plagued by dull, sopping wet paintings, and most times I ended up throwing them out. But this year, I wanted to tackle watercolor and create my own unique style with such a difficult medium. Now, what I did notice when I first started painting with watercolor was that my paintings were very dull, and they lacked that gorgeous, rich saturation that I craved, and that I often times get with my acrylics. But through a lot of trial and error, and as a complete beginner, believe me, I have found a few tips and tricks to help boost that saturation in my paintings and finally get some nice, rich, vibrant colors. As a complete watercolor novice, something that I didn't realize until recently was the importance of water and its cleanliness when painting. Throughout my entire sessions painting, I would use the same water from start to finish, not to mention in the exact same container I would wash my acrylic brushes in. Oof. <laughs> Even doing this voiceover, I am cringing and so embarrassing, and I can't believe this didn't click in until now. <laughs> but this muddy, nasty water was being transferred into my paintings and really contaminating those beautiful pigments in my watercolor. A way to ensure your pigments are pure and deliciously bright is to replace your water more often throughout your sessions and ensure your water is kept clear and clean. You can do this or you can opt in for a two container system. One container of water is used for washing and cleaning your brushes, and the other is for mixing your colors or reactivating your paints on your palette. By making this simple, subtle change, it made a whole lot of difference in the brightness and accuracy of my colors, and it actually made my color mixing duties a lot easier as well. This trick works for all watercolors, of course, but I found was especially helpful when I invested in a higher quality, more expensive watercolor kit, as we are paying for those rich, pure pigments and the quality of our paints. We don't want something as simple as dirty water to compromise our paints in any way, and we want to make sure we get the most out of our money and our materials. The biggest change I made to my style and my technique with watercolor, and in my opinion is the most exciting tip today, is adding colored pencil to my art kit and combining both watercolor and colored pencil together. I never seem to be confident enough in my brush strokes with watercolor, nor do I trust myself to mix the perfect consistency of paint to water ratio. So by adding colored pencil on top, it really helps boost the saturation and the clarity of my colors, but also allows me more control defining certain areas in my painting and adding textures to it as well. For me, it acted as my safety net, I like to call it. If my watercolor strokes went a little wild or the paint stroke was incredibly dull, I had way too much water in a certain area, I can always come in over top, match the color of my pencil to my painting, and alter any areas that I think may need improvement. With colored pencil, the possibilities are truly endless in how they can apply to you and your paintings. Whether it is a unique technique like adding hatching or cross hatching to a painting, or to help you with blending areas together, I encourage you to try them in your next watercolor and see how they work for you. I personally have always struggled with my shadows and highlights when it comes to watercolor, and I never really got the hang of how to paint in reverse. So with acrylics, I am so accustomed to working from dark to light and layering in a specific way. I can put my highlights on top of my already painted shadow layer in acrylic, and I don't really have to worry about it. But when working with watercolor, I'm essentially working backwards, which is incredibly strange. So colored pencils allow me to add in the highlights on top of my already completed layers, removing a lot of the frustration for me. So in the top area of this bird painting, I was really able to bring in my white or my cream colored colored pencils and add in that highlight on top of this beautiful sort of wine color. And I thought the technique and the effect that it gave was really quite effective. If you're finding this video helpful so far, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to become a part of our YouTube family. I offer all types of art videos every month and have loved being a part of your art journey so far. Let's get back to it.
Something that I think comes with time and lots of practice is layering with watercolor and how to get the right consistency. I have been finding personally that with my paintings, I am either super heavy handed with pigment or I do not use enough. So I am either left with a very thick opaque brushstroke or a very dull one. Finding that zone in the middle actually helps bring out the brightness in your paints and a more vibrant color. And until now, I thought that it was more the merrier and turns out I was way wrong. By having the right consistency of water and utilizing multiple layers of paint, it allows for the brightness and the pigment of the paint to shine through. When the paint is applied too heavily, it almost has a very dark, opaque appearance with not a lot of light. This can make your paintings duller and seem more sunken into the paper. It almost like it becomes very heavy and very flat. By utilizing multiple layers with this perfect consistency, I have found the best results. My paints are brighter, more visible, more saturated, and although it has taken me a while to get here, and even now I still have a hard time some days, it has been well worth the practice for brightening up my paints and my paintings. Another tip that I noticed that has affected my paint and its brightness is layering wet on dry. Now this goes hand in hand with our paint and water ratio and both can be applied together to create optimally bright paints. When I layer this way, and again, I am no expert in this medium and I am learning alongside all of you, it appears as though my colors are richer and create a much more vibrant feel. It's as though both the wet and the dry layers combine together and the richness really shines through. I personally have not had the same luck when applying wet on wet and maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I'm curious to your thoughts. My watercolorists out there, my experts in this YouTube family, is there a scientific explanation for this? What are your experiences and what technique do you prefer? Lastly, something that I like to add to all of my watercolor paintings that has not only made the pigments pop off the page, but has also created a unique style for me is the addition of black liner pens, white jelly rollers, and acrylic pump markers to my toolkit. I typically start all of my watercolor paintings with a ink outline with my Molotow black liner pens, and this creates a guide for me to paint in, very similar to, let's say, a coloring book. I admire any artist who can watercolor with no guide or a very light sketch underneath. And please feel free to share those magical watercolor powers with me because to this day, I just cannot get the hang of it. So I stick to using an outline. It saves me a lot of time and a lot of frustration. To make things easier, I create this outline first. And at the end of every painting, I typically will outline areas of importance or areas of large highlights and textures even further with my jelly rollers, which is like a white gel pen to give them a little bit extra oomph. Now, I know this is a very stylized approach and may not apply to everyone, depending on your style that you were going for or your style with watercolor. So pick and choose these bits that help you. Um, I definitely will say above all else, try adding those white spot highlights. If you don't like the black liner pens, by all means, omit them, but definitely give the jelly rollers or the uh, acrylic pump markers a try and see how they change your work and kind of add to that brightness really popping off those pigments off the page. I can say that I'm addicted and I can't get enough. I have to be very careful and choosy of where I put this highlight. Otherwise, my entire painting is just going to be highlights, but give it a try and let me know. A big shout out to our channel sponsors, Chartpack, Grumbacker, and Molotov for sponsoring today's video, as well as sponsoring my content here on YouTube. Their links can be found in the description box below, as well as places where to purchase their products for your own art toolkit. Want to see more? Learn how to monetize your artwork with this next video, all about custom commissions and how you can make more money.